Hello, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and this is a response to, what did I see here? Avoid the rain, the radiation is real, by Churchman. I think that's pronounced Churchman. Anyway, um, I... First off, let me just state that I'm sure that there is radiation from Japan. I have my um, Geiger counter here, which has been running non-stop and I have collected approximately, what, three months of data. I have my uh, systems continuously graphing out the um, uh, data and spitting out logs of it. And you can go to my website, anti-proton.com, and you can actually look at... I think I have 2.5 months of it up. I haven't put the last uh, 15 days up yet. Uh, but if you look at it, you'll notice that I'm receiving approximately 14 counts per minute of background. When it rains, it does go up to 15 and 16. And that's, by the way, a long-running average of hours and hours. I have, like, you know, 20,000 counts and such on before I actually get these kinds of averages. I am highly skeptical when I see people that have huge, huge, huge counts. And I am fully aware of the difference between a standard pancake and my little thin window. I have an LND 712. All right. Uh, the most common pancake you're going to find out there right this moment is the LND 7317. Um, that's the one you're going to find in things like inspectors and uh, those sorts of Geiger counters. And yours looks like it's probably a similar unit. Anyway, um, yours is going to read many times higher than mine, and that's to be expected. But, of course, I can't actually see the readings that are on your Geiger counter, which is the first thing. You really should show the readings that are on your Geiger counter so we can actually see what they are, because I can hear it ticking, and I can maybe try to guess. Anyway, if you're reading anything over maybe 200 or so counts per minute on a, on a um, pancake, or anything over maybe 100 counts per minute on a, a little thin window like mine, you really, really, really ought to consider taking samples and taking them to a university, a university and having a scintillator look at them. The scintillator can measure uh, occurrences uh, versus energy and give you a, a graph of the entire um, spectrum that you're seeing of radiation. It will tell you what is in the air around you because e each one of these particles emits a particular type of, of energy. And, well, it's not a particular type of energy. Well, they, some are beta, some are alpha, some are gamma, and they're various subsets, subsets of each. But they'll, they'll, set out various, they'll send out various amounts of energy. And, uh, like, uh, you might find a 500 kiloelectron volt beta particle, beta negative, and then you might get, like, a 450 kiloelectron volt. And, and because of the differences in the energy, you can tell what type of particle is there and what's not. That sorts out really quickly what, what, what the radiation source is. Also, if you're being exposed to that much radiation, if you're picking that up, then you might want to consider talking to the authorities about it, uh, emailing or contacting in some way the EPA or your state's Environmental Protection Agency. And the reason you should is because if the dangers, and here, here's logic, if, if, if the radiation is high enough that you think that we should be afraid, then you should report it. It's like seeing someone's house burning down the street. If you see it burning and you think it shouldn't be burning, then you should report it, right? If this is totally 100% real, and you're, these are the readings you're getting, you should report it, and I hope you do that. I have found as high as 33 counts per minute. My guy kind of reads 14 around here normally. And 33 counts a minute is not enough to warrant doing something like that, but it is enough for me to know that there is radiation coming over. I can't prove it's from Fukushima because I haven't run it across the scintillator yet. But it occurs at approximately the same time as the rain. Now, um, I have seen several people on YouTube that have uh, claimed to have readings up in the uh, uh, five, six hundred counts per minute. And of course, the the... the that's just significantly higher. If you go to Japan, you don't find readings that high. I know because I have people I know in Japan, and there are Geiger uh, tubes that are running stations and such in Japan for uh, RadiationNetwork.com, which of course I'm a member of, and they're not getting readings like that. I've, I've seen the videos of the hot spots in Japan that somehow exist here and there, and perhaps those are true. And in fact, in Japan, where there actually are three meltdowns, that's quite conceivably possible. But you aren't getting those kinds of readings normally in Japan anywhere. You shouldn't be getting them here. And uh, of course if you do give us your readings, please give it to us in counts per minute 
not Millerims or Millerankins or Sieverts, because of course those mean absolutely nothing, because the, the energy levels uh, change and are, are not scalable versus what your Geiger counter was calibrated with, which is probably cesium-137 like everyone else for the... I mean, you're not, not everybody is calibrated with cesium-137, but almost everyone is. So I would advise you, if you're getting readings that high, that you really should, if you're concerned, you should actually contact your uh, local state and uh, even city authorities, if you like, and they can come over and they can test. And if you don't trust them, take that swipe that you did, take it to a university, many of them will help you, and put it up against a scintillator, which will tell you what's in it. And I, a lot of people say the radiation you know, dissipates fast. Well, if it's dissipating really fast, then it's producing daughter products. And a mass spectrometer or a scintillator will tell you what those are. Now, um, the other thing to keep in mind, too, is I keep having people say that it dissipates fast, and I haven't quite figured that out yet. That, that strikes me as be, being something else, because consider the half-life for a minute. If in two or three hours it can dissipate, then if you do the math and calculate how much, because remember, half-life is half every, every single period of time, uh, take a guess how strong it would have had to be when it left Fukushima. It would have had to been up in the, you know, uh, probably the millisievert range or more, which of course it, most of those things are not once they dissipate. The, there's not enough becquerels per, you know, cubic meter to do that. But those are just a couple random thoughts. Um, please show us the readings in counts per minute so we can see. And if you could, next time it rains when it's done rating, walk outside with the Geiger counter, rub the, um, well, don't touch it to anything, never explode, never actually touch your, your pancake probe, but move the pancake probe over the car, walk down the street a little ways to random things. That, that makes it more real and confirmable because it, you know, if you're walking all over the place, just, you know, going over the mailbox with it, going down the street with it, and it's, and it's going nuts like this, then that's much more indicative of a widespread contamination and not a local phenomenon, such as, you know, thorium in your clay outside of your house or whatnot. So anyhow, please do that if you could. And this is Tom from anti-proton.com. Bye-bye. Uh,